It's Friday, August the 30th, and guess what? College football is here for another day, and I've got three best bets on the way for you. Two on this Friday slate, and then one for tomorrow's Saturday game. Let's get into these winners for today. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF Bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day as we're just trying to get to the bag together and make some money. Yesterday, we started off the college football season not too shabby, one in one to get the year started. We wanted to go two and no, but it happens. We cashed on the UNC and Minnesota under 50 and a half. No sweat bet there. I told you neither of those offenses were that good. We saw that yesterday. I told you I leaned in Minnesota on the money line. Oh my goodness. What a meltdown by Minnesota, man. I had them on the money line live and you hate to see that. And then Jacksonville State, that was just a piss poor bet. Once I saw the whole betting community in the world on Jacksonville State, I got a little bit worried. I'm like, maybe they're just as good as we all think they are. And then they came out, got absolutely punched in the mouth by Coastal Carolina. And then that just goes to show you that turnovers is so crucial in this game. They had too many turnovers. So one and one on the day yesterday. We do have three future bets pending. If you haven't been tapped into the channel, the three future bets that I've given you guys so far are three teams to make the college football playoff. These are all hedges off of each other. They can all three make it. We could all cash in on that. But anyway, Utah to make the college football playoff. We took Boise State to make the college football playoff and then Memphis as well. Utah's at plus 200. Boise's at plus 400. Memphis is at plus 500. So really good odd value on all that. Utah came out a little bit slow yesterday, but they figured it out later on. Completely blew out Southern Utah. So you can see our year-to-date record right here. Not too shabby. A little bit rough for the month of August. Shout out to baseball for completely screwing us over, but it is okay. I will be back with some baseball next week. I'm just like a little kid at Christmas right now. I'm just excited for college football. So that's all I'm focused on, but I do want to see that Dodgers and D-backs matchup today between Kershaw and Zach Gallen. That should be a pretty good one. But if you do want some of those baseball winners, don't only smash that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing, all right? But also make sure that you guys are inside our free Discord group so you guys get those winners as well, right, my friends? Let's dive into these winners for this August 30th card. For my first best bet of the day, we are going to head to the battle of the W's. You know what that means. Wisconsin versus Western Michigan. And in this match, I'm actually going to take the Broncos here against the Badgers. And I'm going to take them on the points, plus 24 and a half, minus 120 odds. Now, do I think that Wisconsin is up on upset alert? No, I don't. Wisconsin's a really good team, okay? They've been traditionally a really powerhouse school there in the Big Ten. They like to run the ball down your throat. They like to bleed the clock. They have normally a really strong defense. That's what you could typically expect out of a Wisconsin team. But over the past few years, this Wisconsin team has just not been the same from what we've seen. The real big question mark behind this team is their quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke. After throwing for 25 touchdowns and six interceptions for Miami back in 2021, since then he's only thrown for 29 touchdowns and 17 interceptions over the past two seasons. So he hasn't really been as strong as he was when he first came into the college football scene. Now we have to really question, is this Wisconsin team as strong this year as they have been in years past because Western Michigan when you look at this team Matt Peralta the Bedaily Juice made a great point that when I was listening to his podcast this morning this Western Michigan team is very similar to North Dakota State I gave you guys North Dakota State in the discord in the first half yesterday that cashed and they also covered the full game spread I told you guys you could take that on the channel if you stayed till the end of the video yesterday this Western Michigan team is very similar to North Dakota State and what do I mean by that North Dakota State obviously it's a smaller school but they have a tradition and a program of winning. So does Western Michigan here in the MAC. They're a team that is always competitive in the MAC conference. They're a team that's always going for the MAC championship. And this year, we're expecting the same exact thing, okay? The Broncos are returning their leading receivers and their starting quarterback and their starting running back. And their starting running back rushed for over a thousand yards last year. That's Jalen Buckley. We're expecting a lot of great things out of this offense. They've returned eight offensive starters on that side of the ball. Meanwhile, on the defensive side of the ball, in the secondary, they returned Tate Hollock and Aaron Wolford, two guys who finished first and second on the team in tackles. Then they also got a transfer from Louisville in Popeye Williams, and that should be really good to help bolster that defensive line. Now, again, I'm giving you all these things about how Western Michigan's a solid team. Do I think they're going to beat Wisconsin? No, but I do think that this is going to be a very close game, very similar to what we saw with the Colorado North Dakota State game. Obviously, Colorado won the game in the end. They obviously won the game pretty handily. It wasn't like a 
sweat at the end. And I think it could be the similar thing here because of the way that Wisconsin plays the game. They're going to run the ball a lot, okay? And then when they run the ball, that eats a lot of clock. And then when you play defense the way they do, which is more of a bend, don't break style, which is kind of not trying to give up a lot of chunk plays, really just trying to work your way up and down the field, it now causes for you to use a lot of time on the clock. This Badgers defense is not as dominant they used to be. They used to be a, like a top 10 defense. Now they're ranked 62nd in defensive success rate. And when you look at the numbers, the head coach, Luke Fickle, he's not really known for blowing out opponents. And now that we're getting a spread of 24 and a half, that's just way too many points. If you look back to last season, the Wisconsin Badgers did not beat a single team by more than 21 points. And that includes a Buffalo team that only won three games last year to start the season. When you look at Fickle's teams in his career, when he's favored by more than 22 or more points, he's only 6-12 and 12 against the spread and has not covered in the last seven games when he's been more than a three-touchdown favorite. So all of these things, when you compile them together, the fact that Western Michigan is typically a strong mid-major program, this Wisconsin defense is not as strong as they used to be defensively. They have question marks around the offensive side. They're going to run the ball a lot. All these different things for me, it's just way too many points here. I like Western Michigan in this matchup. 24 and a half points. I'm willing to lay that. Give me that. If your book has that 24, feel free to buy the juice so you can get that three touchdown and the field goal point there and you can still be able to not push. So give me Western Michigan here as our first pick of the day. For our second best bet of the day, we're going to go to tomorrow's card real quickly and I'm going to go to one game that I want to single out and that is going to be between the University of Miami and the Florida Gators. And I'm going to take Miami here minus two and a half, minus 110 odds. Now the Gators are one of the teams this year in college football that had the biggest question mark around it from top to bottom and really had the most approved. Head coach Billy Napier is probably on the hot seat after finishing below 500 in two consecutive seasons at Florida and now they have one of the toughest strengths of schedule this year and this doesn't fare well for them going against a Miami team that completely reloaded coming out of the transfer portal. Two consecutive years in a row they've been top 10 in recruiting from the transfer portal and this year they were able to add two key pieces both at the quarterback and running back positions. They were able to add Cam Ward from Washington State at quarterback and Damian Martinez the running back from Oregon State. If you ever watch Damian Martinez at Oregon State this dude was an absolute hoss. He ran for over 2,100 yards in two seasons and there's no doubt in my mind that this junior is going to be able to flourish inside of this offense We're under Shannon Dawson the offensive coordinator for the Hurricanes. They love explosive plays. They love to stretch out the field and that's why I just have a question around this Florida offense because can they score enough points to keep up with Miami? They have Graham Mertz starting for them who's in his sixth season. If you remember him he played like four seasons at Wisconsin and he was like really subpar. Like he's not a guy who throws it deep down the field. He has to have a strong running game to support him and when you have that type of situation where you don't have a quarterback who's really going to like make you worry then the defense can really load up the box and shut down the run which is what Florida normally tends to do best and keep in mind that Florida has lost their truthfully their best player in Travis Etienne as he transferred to Georgia right so because of all these reasons I believe that the number here is really favorable I would actually take Miami on the money line at like minus 130 if you want to do that minus 135 I get that Florida is at home in this matchup so you can kind of understand the advantage that they do have being in the swamp but Miami to me is the best team in the ACC this year there's a ton of expectations for them not only to make the college football playoff but to actually win the ACC Mario Cristobal he has kind of underperformed a little bit in his time in Miami he's not over 500 as a career record but I do think that he has what it takes this season with the talent that he's been able to transfer in to be able to put the pressure on this season and I don't like this Florida team offensively I don't think they're going to score enough points give me Miami minus two and a half for one of my picks for tomorrow now for our third and final best bet of the day I'm going to give you a quick college football player prop for tonight and we're going to go to the TCU and Stanford matchup there's actually a few player props that I like in this game. I'm waiting for some more of the rushing lines to come out, specifically for Ashton Daniels, the quarterback for Stanford. But there is one quarterback that I do want to single out, and that's Mr. Josh Hoover. And I'm going to take over 283 and a half passing yards, minus 110 odds. Now, I like Josh Hoover in this matchup because this quarterback for TCU, he can absolutely sling the rock. Keep in mind that last year, Stanford was the number one, actually, probably the last, I should say that way, right? They were the worst defense in all of college football in terms of passing yards per game. They were absolutely dismal, and that's why they sucked so bad.
bad. When you look at the numbers, they were literally giving up over 300 yards per game to opposing quarterbacks. And now you have a guy like Josh Hoover's coming in here with this high flying potent TCU offense. He went over this number in five of the seven games that he started in 2023. So there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to do it again today. Look at some of the numbers that he put up as the end of the season. Against Oklahoma, he threw for 344 yards, going over his 275 and a half line. In his game before that against Baylor, he threw for 412 yards. His start before that against Texas, 302 yards. His start before that against Texas Tech, 353 yards. So that you can literally see in, in five of the last six starts to end the regular season, he was able to fly over this number, getting over 400 yards on some of these plays. And now you have a Stanford defense that's not all the way revamped just yet. Keep in mind that this is a Stanford team that is more worried about offense than they are defense. Their head coach, Troy Taylor, who's in his second year there, he came over from Sacramento State from the FCS. He likes to run that up-tempo offense, that no-huddle offense. I'm expecting a ton of offense. I'm expecting a lot of quick hitting plays, which also leads to maybe quick three and outs, which means more offensive opportunities for TCU as well. A lot of people are on Stanford, plus nine, plus 10, plus 11. I don't know if I can necessarily get there because I don't trust this defense. But the one thing that I do know is Josh Hoover is a guy who can absolutely throw the rock. And for me, I'm expecting him to exploit that today. So as a result, let's go over 283 and a half passing yards as our third and final best bet of the day. Well, that's it for me today, my friends. Two best bets on this Friday slate and then one on tomorrow's Saturday slate. Give me Josh Hoover over 283 and a half passing yards and then give me Western Michigan at plus 24 and a half as way too big of an underdog there. And then tomorrow we're going to lock in Miami either on the money line or minus two and a half. Just get under that field goal key number. For more picks and plays that I'm going to be dropping, make sure you click the link in the description. And then tomorrow I will be back with a quick reel with some of my favorite college football plays on the full and loaded first Saturday slate of the college football season. All right, my friends, stick with us this season. We have a lot of money to make. We have a lot of games to take. And this year, we should probably get even more lines and different types of plays because I'm seeing a whole lot of different wacky stuff out there, including like the different head-to-head -head spreads. Have you guys been seeing that? Like where you have to basically, you could take one person to cover in one game and a different person to cover in a different game and they go head-to-head. -head. It's pretty crazy what we're seeing this year with some of the different lines out there. So we have a lot of chances to get creative, a lot of opportunities. So make sure you guys are tapping into to the channel here consistently, my friends. Let's get after that money and I'll see y'all tomorrow's video. Later, guys.